Ah, it's a beautiful day today. This is the kind of weather I like. What a fine day for science. Let's do some more. Clem's getting soaked. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So, as some of you know, this piece of crap died out on me. So, yeah, I'm going to make a proper battery charger. And this is the design that I've come up with. Now, I'm just going to be using my old camera for this because I just can't be asked to get this all set up with a separate microphone and everything. It's going to be less editing for me to do if I use this camera, so yeah. Anyway, with that all out of the way, this is the circuit that I've come up with. And I'm going to talk you through all the different bits and pieces. So, here we've got our 48 volts going in. I still need to scrounge up some kind of power supply that will... Give me 48 volts, which shouldn't be too difficult. This section of the circuit provides a regulated voltage and a current limit. So I can set the voltage with this potentiometer here and this resistor when I decide what I'm going to use there is going to limit the current. Then of course down here we've got the battery being charged. And this circuit here detects when the voltage is high enough. It will disconnect the battery to prevent it from being overcharged. So I've got an op-amp here set up as a comparator and when the voltage gets high enough it will trip this relay which disconnects the battery and because we've no longer got the battery pulling any voltage down that relay will stay on. So it's not going to chatter back and forth or anything like that. Hard thing is finding a transformer that's going to provide me with the right voltages. It's not like I have a shortage of transformers here. And this is just maybe 10% of all the transformers I have but I think I'm going to use this one, because this one, although it's way overkill for this project, this one gives out the right kind of voltages, so, yeah. Now I better get all these off my bench before this huge massive iron breaks it. So, some of you might be thinking, why don't I go switch mode? Well, for a very similar reason why I went with this transformer. I don't have any switch mode transformers of that kind of voltage. In fact, this is the only mains transformer I could find that gives me the kind of voltages that gives me the kind of volt. In fact, this is the only mains transformer I could find that gives me those kind of voltages. So, yep, this is what we're going with. Sadly, though, I thought we would go with this transformer, but it seems like the primary has gone completely open. So I've got my faulty meter here. Oh, by the way, what's wrong with my probes? Somebody said that looks very sad. Looks alright to me. Clip leads are much easier to use. If I measure across the entire length of the primary, it's completely open, or so it would seem. But if I actually put the clip leads on the primary, you can see it seems perfectly fine. We're reading about 8.7 ohms there. So I don't know if we've got a broken trace or something, because it looks alright, but I don't see any cracks in the traces or anything. And I can see a jumper wire, which connects, basically connects this blue wire to the um, this terminal here. And this brown wire connects to this one here, so uh, I really don't know what's going on with that. I know I've used this transformer in the past because I've marked what kind of voltages it gives. So we've got a 24 volt winding there, a 24 volt winding there, a 14 volt winding there, and I don't know what this one gives because that's rubbed off. So I'm just going to remove this um, circuit board. Not going to be using it. Right, well, I've got that off now. I'm just keeping that there for a reference. So I've got to be really careful here because exposed live mains connections. I'm curious about what that voltage was, so I'm going to plug that in. If I can just get this wire untangled. I'm going to plug that in and see what voltage we get. 5 volts, is that all? 
Everything's five volts these days. Right, let's make sure the 24 volt winding's working. Get that on there. Should give us about 24 volts. 25, well that's close enough. Make sure this one's working. Very good. And now the 14 volt winding, which should be these pins. If I can get my clip leads onto there. Yep, great. Right, so next thing I want to do is I want to put the two 40, um, the two 25 volt windings in series, so I get 50 volts or 48 volts. Firstly, though, I want to make sure there's no continuity between those two windings, so I don't short anything out. I know that looks good. So no continuity. Okay, I'm just going to connect these two together if I can. On there, and get this one on there. Make sure nothing's touching and shorting out. Put that back onto AC voltage and see what we get. If we get F all, we'll know it's connected out of phase. No, nope, we're 49 volts there, so yeah. For once, things seem to be going good. It's lovely and rainy earlier. Now the goddamn gay sun has come out and ruined everything. Okay, so get everything I need for building a basic power supply. So this is gonna handle the charging of the battery. And this is gonna work the op amp. And I've soldered wires onto the transformer so I can connect all of this to this. Although on second thoughts, I think it might just be easier to solder the rectifiers directly onto the transformer. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Oh well, yeah. Apart from the voltage regulator, we're pretty much there, power supply-wise. So, on the 50 volt side, got a, you know what, begins with F, B, and R. The reason why I've used two capacitors here is because, well, I just don't have any large value capacitors at 50 volts, so I've stuck together a couple of 33,000, um, 33,000, 3300 microfarad capacitors, 35 volts rated, so that will give me a voltage rating of about 70 volts, so that's well within what these capacitors will be able to handle, because each one of those is going to get about 25 volts across it, so yeah. Trouble is, that does cut the capacitance in two, so this is now more like 15,000 microfarad, but it's enough. Now, normally in a situation like that, you would have resistors across each capacitor to even out the voltages, so one capacitor doesn't get more than the other. However, what I've done is I've just attached a wire to where the two capacitors connect and connected that to where the two windings on the transformer connects because that's like a center tap. And of course, on the other side, we've got another FBR, small capacitor, what did I use? 2200 microfarads, 25 volts. Yeah. Well, I think the next thing to do is turn this on and see if it blows up. Right, here we go. Let's check the 15 volt side, which is gonna get regulated down to 12 volts when I add the regulator. It's going to be about maybe 20 volts or so when it's um, rectified to DC. So let's see what we actually get. Let's see if this works. I'm just going to plug the transformer in. And we get... Yeah, well, that was close. 19.1 volts. Well, that's uh, enough. Just briefly unplug it while I connect the other end. Let's see what that's doing. That still have some voltage in it. Well, that's quite a bit more than what I expected. We're getting almost 70 volts out of that, so... Uh, 
That's just on the tipping point of what those capacitors can handle. I've unplugged it now, by the way. That's why the voltage is dropping. But, yeah, I think we got our power supply. I know what some people are like. He sucks. I wouldn't hire him. His projects look like crap. I'm completely lacking intelligence, but I'm gonna say nasty things to him. Oh, I forgot to breathe. I do that sometimes. I don't build these to look pretty. I'm not a professional. I'm a hobbyist. And if I was doing this for someone else, I would take a lot more care. Anyway, with that rant over, yeah, time to attach the voltage regulator. I swear, mess grows on this bench. Anyway, made the voltage regulator for the um, uh, comparator circuit. There is going to be other stuff on this board later on. It's not just going to be everything in this little tiny corner here. Let's just make sure that works and we get 12 volts. And indeed we do. It's a bit glary on the meter, but yeah. Okay, we have the power supply. Okay, well, you'll have to excuse the mess right now, but I think I'm going to sign off for now because this video is probably getting very long. I do tend to waffle on and on and on as the camera slowly drifts down as I'm talking. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with a few things and then pick this video up again sometime later. So, I've started building the charge circuit, which is, I mean, charge sense circuit, which is this part here. I've made a few changes. Instead of a BJT here, I'm using a MOSFET. Which is right there. Also in the um, charge sense part of the circuit, I've put a Zener diode at the input of the op amp, just to prevent the inputs of the op amp from getting over voltaged. And had a little bit of a scare with the battery earlier. I plugged it into that little meter that I've got on my bike. And the socket went up in flames. I think something shorted out in there, so yeah. Taking the battery apart, put a new charging, new charging socket on it. That's currently being charged by my power supply. Right, 40.6 volts. You know the drill with this battery. And I've put a fuse in there because that did not have a fuse. I will put that with proper insulin tape, but um, that's just holding it together for now, but yep. Well, I think I've waffled on and on and on enough, so until next time, goodbye.